Hi, my name is Jim Byrne, Principal Systems Engineer for Data Pivot Technologies. Today I will be going over a ComVault ComServe Live Sync and more specifically a planned failover. And if you'd like to reach me or one of our other engineers at Data Pivot, you can reach us at uh, ComVault at datapivottech.com. We'll be glad to answer any questions you may have or if you'd like to engage us with some, uh, for some PS for some professional services, we'll be glad to uh, talk to you and go over what needs to be done to get this set up. Okay, and here we have the data pivot demo environment. I have two data centers, one in North Andover, Massachusetts, and the other one in Pomfret, Connecticut. And what you're going to see in today's demo, if you look closely, you'll see uh, the name of the clients. The, there's one node called CS1, <coughs> ComServe1, Node1. And the other one is ComServe 1, Node 2. So these are both in the same COM cell. And you can, a lot of times you'll see in documentation, people will call it a disaster recovery. And it's really, it's an active passive setup is what it is. So I could be running over here, say for three months, then I can fail over and over here for three months, and then I can fail back every three months. And I used to do this a lot. Um, when I used to work on Wall Street, we used to do a lot of DR tests. And what's nice to do is you can set this up, run your, your comm serve three months at each site back and forth. Then you've removed the backup software from the DR test because you show you do it every three months. And then when people want to do their DR tests, you can just be restoring physical machines or you know Zen server, KVM, whatever you got to do for your application uh, uh, customers to show that you can recover their data. Because a lot of DR tests, uh, what I used to do is we used to have to set up a you know a server and restore it and all that it took like you know a few hours to get everything all all going so it's, it's much better if you just remove the backup software from the test so again what I'm going to show you today will really help you out in your backup environment you can run at each site run here three months run here three months back and forth all right with that said I'm gonna um, get out of this here so let me uh, go here There we go. And I'm going to go here. What I did is, through the, the magic of uh, video, I am going to play. Let me see if this will go here. Come on. This is the lab. And I made a recording so I can fast forward. Because when you do this, you'll find that it's just, a lot of it is just waiting. So let me hit play here, and this will start going, and we'll, we'll go through the environment. So what you see here. Is this is one node here this is cs1n1 and then over here under the general tab we have cs1n1 this is the com serve that's running this will be clear in a second this is the instance 2 which will be doing the restore it's got a sql agent on it and then over here this is the com serve that's currently down this is the passive node cs1n2 instance 1 and over here we have the other uh, com Commvault instance where it's just basically to do the SQL restores. Alright, so with that said, we're going to get ready to go here. There's our SQL agent. There's ComServe instance one. And then down here we have ComServe, ComServe two. And now I'm just going to bring the service up. You can tell the difference between the two instances. You have just a few processes here. That's just a SQL agent for Commvault. And over here, this is the main ComServe. And then down below, we're going to show the same thing. We're going to click on the services. Here you have a ComServe. See, it's all red. There, All the nodes are down right now. And let's go services here. And you can see here, we have just a few services running. Now, what you're going to see happen here is we're going to go through uh, moving the services from ComServe node N1 over to N2. Now, what I wanted to show you here, you notice how it says CS1? That's the name of my ComServe. That's a floating IP. And you can see CS1 N1 and N2 down below there. So CSN1 is currently the 192.168.8.101. N2 is 8103. So now we're going to do our failover. Watch how easy this is. 
Oh, well, we want to talk about here real quick. Let me just pause real quick here. Um, there's different failover types. I'm going to show you a production failover. We're going to actually do the real thing. Uh, production maintenance is when you want to do patching. So I can um, just fail my services over to the other node. And I could still do restores, but backups won't run. So I can patch the production comm serve and then fail it right back. So that, that's mainly just for doing software. You're going to fail over to the restore node, do your patching, fail back, and then patch the other side. So that's what that's all about. And test, uh, if you want to set this up, you could have a little group of clients where you can do a test, and it'll bring up the, uh, the DR comm serve, and you can do some you know, practice backups and restores for a small group of clients if you want to just test things out. But generally speaking, uh, most people want to just see this production failover, so that's what we're going to do. All right, so we've resumed. Now, what you should take a look at here, see what says failover 2? That's where we're going. So we're running on CS1N1. We're going to go to CS1N2. See how it's all red over on N2? So that's where we're going. Yep, right there. So that, that's the name of the node. The services are all down. And here's my services there. So now we're going to go here. We're going to initiate the failover. And they want you to type the word confirm to make sure you really want to do it. And so we type confirm here. And then we click OK. And now they have this little view details tab. Now this is where I'm going to do a little bit of fast forwarding um, because primarily not a lot goes on here. Um, in the very beginning here, you'll see the services come down. So it's stopping the services. So this takes a little while. And what, what I want you to take a notice of, if you look at the, um, the boxes that have three processes running, um, those stay up the whole time. It's only the first instance, the actual comm server. You'll see the services come down on one node, come up on the other node when we're done. So that guy's still coming down. And there's a little icon blinking down the bottom there. That's the my GUI. I was logged in before and I've just shut the services down, so I'm not going to reconnect, <laughs> obviously, because they're down. And the services on top, they tend to come down pretty quick. There is one service, the uh, Tomcat web service, that can take a little time to come down. So in a second here, we'll fast forward. Yeah, see, there's there's the Tomcat service right there. That, that thing always takes a little while to come down. There's, there's, a, lot, there's a lot behind that service. It's a web server. And fast forward a little bit. Okay, everybody is now down. Okay, so now we're here. So now watch what happens. It's kind of cool. See in the top here how those services are down? Watch what it does. It says enabling and starting all the services. So it brings everything down. It'll bring them up. It won't bring up all the services. It's going to bring up what it needs to do a final sync. So if you watch closely here, You'll see that there they go. See them going up right on the top there. So that's the comm serve coming up, and it's going to start the services it needs to just back up the SQL database because behind Commvault is Microsoft SQL. So that that keeps track of all the data about the jobs, the schedules, the names of the clients, all that stuff. So that's it right there. It says so. It says performing the last sync before the failover. So let me just fast forward here. Let me do a little video magic here. Okay, so it's doing it. Watch the lower right there. You'll see it uh, say it's it's done. It takes a little while to do this. And getting there. Boom. Right there. So that's where it said performing the last sync before the failover. See these services up here, they all shut down. So now this guy is going to stay down. So now it goes through and it disables all these services. And what's kind of cool is Commvault will go into the Windows Control Manager and it disables those services so nobody can bring those services up even if they want to on the passive node. 
it, it, it makes sure that you don't get a split brain uh, condition between your uh, your comm serves. So now we're getting ready to, to get started here. See where it says restoring the databases. So it restored the database. That's pretty quick because it just brought over the last transaction. Now you're bringing up your services. So this doesn't take too long. The services are coming up. And it shouldn't be too much longer once we get these services here tend to come up pretty quick. And then when you get down near the bottom, you got to bring up Tomcat. The Tomcat web server can take a little while. Okay, now it's bringing up uh, MongoDB will come up. And then down below is the uh, Tomcat web server. I'm just going to fast forward a little bit here. Keep watching in the lower right there. Okay, Tomcat came up. We're getting there. Okay, now we're, we're getting at the last part here. It's updating the licensing schedule for the new node. And Combo will automatically sync between the production server and the DR server. So what it's doing is it's setting up the schedules and it's reversing it. So I'm going to be going from this node here, which is N2, and I'm going to do, be copying back to N1. So this, <clears throat> this takes a little while to get going. Yeah, do a little fast forward magic here. Okay, now it's doing the enabling <clears throat> of the services over here. So it'll be set up to come up automatically. And then you get your little window here that the production that the failover was done successfully. So we're done. Now you'll notice when I did this, <clears throat> I literally just clicked initiate failover and didn't do a thing. And you can see everything is now updated. And you can say if I was going to fail over, I would go back to N1. And you can see all those services are down. Oh, everything's been updated. So it knows who's the, um, uh, the production server and who's the uh, standby. And the last thing we need to do, see the, the, the uh, comm server? I'm doing this at the end, so you don't, you don't need to do this until you're done. Um, I'm switching CS1, the pointer, from 101 to 103. That's it. And if you're wondering how I have the same subnet in two data centers, I have a stretch VLAN between them. And then we go in. Now, what's nice is for your operators, when you do this failover, your operators won't even know you did it. When you go to log back in, you just you know type in your administrator. See how it says CS1? Doesn't You don't care about what node it's on. You're just using the floater. You type it in and log right in. And that's it. And then if you want to just see what the clients look like, um, if you go to your jobs, I have a, I have a bunch of jobs I got to catch up on here. I've got some stuff that's down, but you can see all my jobs came back. And everything is still there waiting to go. I've got a bunch of stuff to catch up on. And I believe that's it. If we scroll forward a little bit, I wanted to go over here to show. Yes, if I can stop right here real quick. If you look closely, see where it says CS1N1 SQL. Notice has an SQL agent below there. That's for copying the logs back and forth. So this, so now that this is set up, it's so easy to fail over between your two data centers. All you have to do is simply just click that initiate failover button. And let me just go here for a minute. Let me minimize this. And I think I'm logged in still. Yes, I am. Yeah, this is what I wanted to show real quick. Let me bring this up. 
if I go here, and again, this is a lab, so that's why a lot of this stuff is just sitting here. <laughs> um, let me go here, SQL Server. Because I know a lot of you that are watching this video probably already have Commvault, so you want to know how it works. Um, so see this here? There's just a subclient here that says CB failover log shipping. So there's a workflow in here depending on which side you're running on. So for example, if I'm run right now, I'm running on N2. So you'll see SQL backup jobs running using this CB failover log shipping. It'll run this and then do the restore to the other side. It keeps the database up, up to date. And then if I fail this thing over, the workflow goes through and reverses the process. So if I fail over from N2 to N1, then you'll see this guy start backing up and restoring to N2. So it's very simple the way it works. It's, and it's just using the SQL IDA agent that comes with Combo. So let's go back here, let's do a quick review. And uh, so again, this is our environment that I have. This, this is what I had showed you. I have ComServe here. ComServe 1, Node 1, ComServe 1, Node 2. <clears throat> the Commvault software is installed on each one of these. The binaries and everything are exactly the same. And then there's a second instance um, installed on each one of these. And that little SQL IDA is what enables you to do the log shipping between these. It's beautiful. So um, what's really nice about this is when you go to do this replication, a lot of products that are out there, you have to use hardware to do this. Uh, with this, it doesn't matter because I'm just using, I'm in the application layer doing it with SQL log, chip, log chipping. So this DR ComServe could be an EC2 instance that's running up in AWS on totally different storage. So I can just migrate my logs up there, and if I want to run up an EC2 for a bit, I can do that, and then I can just with the click of a button come right back. Okay, and that's that's pretty much it. Um, so again, my name is Jim Byrne, a principal distance engineer for. Data Pivot Technologies, and you can uh, reach the engineering team at comvault at datapivottech.com, and we'll be glad to answer any questions you may have about uh, plan failover using ComServe Live Sync, or if you'd like to set up some PS with us, you know, feel free to give us a quick uh, email, and we'll we'll get right back to you. All right, thank you.